Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this station's mask. Okay. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. I'm happy to be here. It's almost Halloween. My name is Laura Meadows, and I have been in different horror films, different films, uh, music videos, commercials, uh, lots of different projects. I was looking at some of your backgrounds you have there. Oh, yeah. I can see that one, the one with the black dress on. Yeah, that was for a music video. And everybody said that was such a great picture and it was so beautiful and everybody loved it, but they had to redo the music video. How come? Well, they had a different concept. So the second time around, they painted me entirely green. Why? <laughs> what kind of music? I mean, like, was it? <laughs> we were supposed to be fairy tale characters. And I guess my witch was just not witchy enough. <laughs> so instead of that lovely picture you see back there, <laughs> they painted me all green. My face green, my hands green, my arms green. And, but it was still cool. It was still very cool. You know, the red hair and green skin now, sort of more like a Wizard of Oz type of vibe to it. But I posted those pictures and people were like, oh, oh. <laughs> what happened to the other one? That, you know what it is? If they would have seen the green first and then this one, it would have been a different response. Like, oh yeah, this is really cool. The green and they see this, they're like, oh wow, yes. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> Should have started out with the green one. <laughs> but um, it was cool. I, I end up dancing in some different things. I was a body double in a show that aired last night, and I just saw who I was doubling. I didn't know ahead of time, and I can't talk about it, so I shouldn't have probably brought it up. <laughs> But I was excited to see, you know, oh, it was what I thought. Cool. Yeah. So there's actually quite a few things I dance on, too, like I did in, in this music video. Oh, nice. So night after night, practicing. And so it was a horror theme and fairy tale characters. And I'm often the witch. <laughs> Do you not, as, with that being said, the video... As far as being the witch, the witch is considered evil. Now, do you like playing roles like that when it comes to acting, or do you care? Do you have do you have a preference? Do you like being like the evil villain type, or whatever you want to call them, or do you want to be the hero, so to speak? I like to be the villain because I feel like it's something I can really get my teeth into. I like that expression of emotion and just 
it lets me release a part of myself that I don't normally. And so I like to do that. I've, I feel that it takes more of my artistic effort. Some people have watched some of the things that I've done and they've remarked, you're nothing like your character. You're so different. You're nice. <laughs> like That's why it's called acting. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, I've never acted before, but I feel like the villain role would be more fun just because you can't really do, I mean, you're doing wrong as being that character, being an evil character, but you can really do no wrong as that character. Like if, say you're in a horror movie or whatever, if you kill somebody, you're expected to. Versus if you're a hero and you do that, you're considered good. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. he, he, you can only do so much to an extent, I guess. Unless you got that one character that's like on the edge. It's like mm -hmm. evil. But. Yeah, I, I, I like being able to step out of who I am and, and uh, take those feelings out like when I've done it's done um scare acting and be able to yell and scream and when do you get to do that and it's okay that's, that's a good point that's a good point. yeah now how do you um, as far as doing the music videos because I know there is besides the dancing I know that sometimes there is some acting involved does that does being in the horror movies does that help or does it not really cross does that cross over music videos and acting Yes, it does. Um, I did a horror movie that was actually a musical. And it was called The Devil's Carnival. And so there was a lot of music and dancing in it. There was a movie before that. The, um, it was a Lair, um, Darren Lynn Boozman. And you can see that uh, that movie so at three o'clock in the morning we w i was playing a clarinet and i was a band member and i was learning dance steps at an antique carnival in riverside california at three in the morning <laughs> and it was a blast it was great you know i thought wow this is so cool to be able to do stuff that is different oh. and just working with other people and to be able to do it. You know, I, I like the unusual and the fantasy type thing. So that was a combination, I would say, of acting, dancing and music videos. So it really meshed and crossed over that way. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Now, what did you start? Did you start acting first or were you doing like videos into music first and well, um, actually, I would say I was into music first. My father was a musician. And since I was, and I, I have a degree in fine art. So I was an artist for uh, quite a few years, a commercial artist and also fashion designer. And I had a lot of friends that were in acting, but since I was four years old, I would hear the music that my dad would play and he played all weekend and I would draw and I have always loved music. I grew up loving music and he would tell me to, that I had to listen to every single kind of music. I was forced to listen to polkas, marching bands, just everything and including the popular music and then he 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 liked it all. He didn't care. He said there is good in every style of music. So I just developed uh, such a love of that and and music videos. I would watch those, and I was so excited to see my favorites and how they would make the music video. But I also found that when I would hear something and I would think about it in my mind. I sometimes I sometimes would have a completely different idea of what the visual would be. And then I would see the video and I'm like, oh, that's not really what I was seeing in my mind. I'm with you. I'm with you 100% on that. Like just as far as music goes, how you can get 
Yeah. You're on a good song or whatever. Yeah. Artists are. Yeah. Close your eyes and you visualize. Yeah. A lot of times you'll visualize yeah. something different in the music video. And then you'll go and watch the video. Say you've never seen the video before. You go see the video. Just like, oh, come on. And <laughs> then there's times you see videos, where, which I do miss, where music videos are kind of like movies. I mean, Michael Jackson was one person who would make his music videos like movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're like... A four-minute song would be like a 10-minute music video, but it'd be so amazing. Like, all the stuff that goes into it, all the choreography and stuff. I'm just like... Right, so I'll watch the game. Uh, and I remember uh, you know, watching these music videos, you know... And they play like a Michael Jackson video. They play something right. different after, like just a regular song and video. Right. How are you going to follow this up with this? Like, this should have been played last. This should have been... And it, I, I miss that with music. I miss that with music in general. Mm-hmm. You know, like the videos, how you get those amazing visuals with the amazing song and like the just the choreography, the storytelling, kind of like watching a little mini movie. And I mean, seeing, seeing as Halloween, I'll just say Thriller is like a great example of that. Oh, yeah, that that's such a classic. Um, I have the gal that was in that who was with Michael Jackson. She's a friend of mine on Facebook. I, I, I don't know if I want to shout out any names. <laughs> I've also worked with that choreographer that worked with Michael Jackson on a flash dance that he called some of the different actors to come to Culver City. And he taught us a dance. And then we gave us a time and he's like, okay, so this is the dance. And then at this time, I want everybody to start dancing. Just, you know, when they'd had the flash dance mobs. So he organized one of those and taught us the dance. And it was pretty complicated to learn in a short period of time. I'm not sure I really got it all down, but I can fake it. <laughs> Thank you. That's cool, though. That sounds, that, it sounds fun, like... I watched the videos and all that stuff. And it, it looks very, very fun. Myself, I cannot save my life. I just don't do it. But it, it just looks fun. See, like out of nowhere. And then it just stops and they just walk off. And it happen. Yeah. Like that's, that's one thing I always love to see just like in person. Because I, I don't know how I would take it. I don't know if I would just stand there and watch it, laugh, or just walk. Like, I know I would watch it for at least a second. But just kind of like how you see it, like again, how I see it on TV or YouTube, for example, you see it, it happens, and then people just like go off mind their own business. And in your head, especially as a kid, you're like, do they just get up? Do they even know each other? Just they just do this? But I mean, <laughs> you know, choreography and all this other cool stuff. Well, generally speaking, you don't know the people. You just answer an ad and you show up and you start dancing and you hope you got enough of it. And then they tell you when, when to start dancing, just, you know, suddenly. But I guess that's not quite a thing anymore. I don't see people doing that so much anymore. Maybe uh, talking about will get people to thinking again. Yeah, it'd, be cool. it'd be funny to see. It'd be cool to see people doing that again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, My silver cup here, kind of going with the Halloween theme. I like it. Actually, goes together. You could say like a witch. I like that. I I didn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, with your with the cup you just got, it makes me think of a witch and a. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think I can I can hear you now. Okay. No, I was just saying your cup. It's like to me it reminds me of like a witch in a castle. Oh yeah. I've collected I've collected these before. Uh, I love these silver cups. I have smaller ones too. You can't quite see it on this on this um, background. Um, and castles. That's one of my favorite things, is castles. Nice. Awesome. So now with act what what got you into acting? Good question. I had friends that were in acting and um, they did plays. And I guess I, and I was in the visual arts and I was also a music minor. And 
but people always loved watching me. So uh, <laughs> they couldn't take their eyes off me for some reason. So in 1999, I answered an ad in the newspaper and I lived in Dallas, Texas, and I had just had my oldest son and Oliver Stone was looking for people to be in a crowd scene. So I took my baby and the baby stroller and my toddler and I went to Texas Stadium and they took my Polaroid and they called me two hours later and they said, we want you to show up on set at 6 a.m. And Oliver Stone says you're cute. So <laughs> that's, and then when I, I got there, I guess it's really not for everybody because people think it's glamorous, but it's really a tremendous amount of work and time and very long hours. But I was just laying there on the ground, looking up at the ceiling and I was like, I love this. And that was the beginning. And I knew then that that's what I wanted to keep doing. Yeah, I like, I like, I like how you said it's like a tough grind and it's not glamorous, but I love doing this. I know how tough it is and how hard it is. It might look beautiful, but building up was not beautiful at all. It was rough, it was tiring. Yeah, I actually find it more interesting to watch the process of it being made as opposed to the final product. I like to see the bones and the structure as opposed to the polished thing at the end, which is, it is outstanding, of course. Yeah. But to me, it's just so interesting to see the parts and the pieces and how it all goes together. And it, always, it never ceases to fascinate me. See, and for me as a fan, like I don't, I've never been on set, so I can say as a fan, like when you get to see these, um, like when they have the DVDs or the Blu-rays with the extras on there, and they show you like a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and you or reading autobiographies, and you hear like things they had to go through. I'm just like, holy shit! Like that's so cool that I lo I like the visuals more, of course, because you can see how they make something so small look so big, like. Whatever, whatever it is, they can make like a little monster, a clay monster, whatever the case may be. And in the movie, it's huge, but in real life, it's about this big. I'm just like, that looks, that's just so cool. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about horror films is watching a transformation of something that I know isn't scary. And I see them putting it together to make it look scary and the artistry that goes into it. And then they're filming it and they get the angle right and the lighting right and the effect right. And then they, and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, wow, that is so cool. That does look scary. And I know it's not. <laughs> and when I'm watching a scary movie, uh, a horror movie, and I start to get scared, I'm like, come on, come on, come on. You know, it's not real. You know, it's not real. But when I can't suspend disbelief, even though I know it's really, it's really good. Which a lot of them are. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I feel effects, it, it, it's hands down the best. Like, I just love the practical effects. And I always use an example of like in a horror movie, say it take, I don't know how long it takes, so special effects people don't hurt me. <laughs> say it takes like 40 hours to make like a head that they're going to explode in the movie. I'm like, okay, it takes 40 hours to make that, and it takes five minutes to five seconds to destroy that. To me, that's so awesome. I feel like if I was that artist, it's kind of like, damn, I just spent all this time making it. But you know what you're doing it for, I guess? Like, I just spent all this time making it, and it's destroyed in two seconds. It's destroyed in two seconds. But I just I just find that so, I'm just like, that's so freaking cool. Especially the older, as an adult, my adult age is versus a kid. As a kid, you, I mean, you might know it's make-believe. At the same time, you don't know anything about practical effects. I didn't as a kid. And now as an adult, I think I appreciate horror a lot more. I always enjoyed it, but I appreciate it a lot more now that you know what goes into more things as far as not just with the acting and all that stuff and directing, but just making something that you have to destroy, making something that takes hours, months, uh -huh. and then it gets destroyed. And like, and you have, and another thing too is you have to do that scene right because you only made one of those heads. And it's like, if you cut it in the wrong spot, that's pretty much it. We got, we got to use it. I know you wanted to hit them right here between the eyes, but you got here a little bit. <laughs> we gotta use that. 
<laughs> yes, once you've got the blood all over you, it's really hard to reset after that in any decent length of time. So you know that you got to get it then. Or maybe you have a change of outfit, but you don't have that many changes of outfits. Like one of uh, my pure joy, they killed me. And I've been killed lots of different ways. And this one was a shower scene, like psycho. And I, they were doing the shots and I had to lay in a bathtub full of red food dye and sugar for about two hours. That doesn't As, <laughs> actually after i w showered it off my skin was amazingly soft i'm like what did you oh that sugar that sugar was really good for my skin <laughs> but once once you've done that scene you can't you know re it's not easy to reset and shoot the whole thing over again you you want to get it then you know when you do the shot or the blood pill or, or what what have you now, do you mind, like, with being covered in blood, does that, does that do you mind so much, or? Uh -uh. No, because I'm a commercial artist, so I'm used to having oil paints on my hands and um, all kinds of different, uh, you know, like pastels and having it all over me and all over everything. So I got used to the mess. It doesn't bother me at all. Some people, yeah, I guess maybe it does, but no, not me. I could I could actually use a little bit more being bothered by it rather than less, but no, it doesn't bother me at all. See, I get I get both ends of the both ends of the spectrum with that with people that want to ask them that. Some people really 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 love it. They just love the blood, just the mess, and they they love it. One just they don't mind it, and then they love it because they know how it's going to look after. And then some are just like. You know, I do it because I have to. I kind of deal with it, but it's just like the feeling on your skin, I guess, and the mess. Again, I have no idea how that feels. And then at times, I guess, depending on how, where, when it's shot, where it's shot, indoor, outdoor, if it's cold, then it's like, okay, I, I do get that. And I, well, I guess more with, with the ladies, if it gets in that, with certain certain things, if it gets in their hair, I guess it's a pain to clean. I Again, I have no I have no clue with certain things, but that. Oh, the, the hair, yeah. Now that's an issue. You did mention the thing that's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> because once you get it in the hair, your hair may not be good for the next shoot or yeah, you've got to do it again. So it can be very difficult and consuming to get it out of the hair. So you mentioned the one thing uh, that the ladies, myself, don't, don't really care for because my hair is curly and I straighten it. Okay. And then when it gets wet, it's kind of like a gremlin, you know? <laughs> It was like the creature appeared. <laughs> My straight, smooth hair is is not uh, is not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to slowly learn these these little these little hair terms because of my wife. Like she'll say her hair is frizzy or frumpy. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. When her when my stepdaughter's around, she knows, obviously she knows exactly what she's talking about. She's like, how did you get this? I'm like, I, I don't know. Me and my guy friends, we don't say our hair is frumpy or frizzy. Or, if I call up my brother right now and said that to me, he'd probably hang up. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Bye. <laughs> well, yeah, the hair is a big issue, especially if you have curly hair. Sometimes I just give up and I just put, put bobby pins and I just let it be curly everywhere. Like some of your pictures you have there, I just give up. I'm like, okay, never mind. I'm just going to let it be that way. But yeah, that's uh, the getting the hair wet. That's one of the, uh, one of the things that, that trouble me probably, but getting the paint on myself, I'm not bothered by that at all. I mean, I did that anyway with oil paintings and so forth. So yeah. In fact, sometimes the, the paint would stay on me for a while as well as paints in films would stay on me for a while. I don't have a problem with it. I'm good. <laughs> and I try to pick clothing that uh, that I know can be destroyed. And that's really not that difficult to do. Yeah. 
Now, do you have um? Do you have like a dream as far as okay horror movies that are already out? Do you have a dream role as far as one of those horror movies you wish you can replace yourself in with the lead female character? Yeah, that's a good question. As far as TV shows go, I liked. I was thinking about the show Once Upon a Time, and I wanted to be Selena, the uh, the wicked. Uh, Queen's sister, and she was oh yeah, kind of like that music video was the uh, Wicked Witch. So once upon a time, I would like to replace myself in that. Also, I would like to be Scully in X Files. Oh. Once upon a time, I don't know all the characters. I watch whether here and there, but Scully is Agent Scully. Yeah, I'd like to be Agent Scully. Um, I guess you can't really say that's horror. It's aliens, but it's still fantasy. And sometimes it was horror. It's on that borderline, though, with the aliens and stuff in the side. I kind of, it's, it kind of, where you go to your next one, who would pick as Mulder? Who would I pick as Mulder? Yeah, seeing as how you picked Agent Scully, who would you want to pick as you mean somebody everybody knows. Well, it could be an Indian. I think I think I would pick the man that is in Lucifer. Oh, I know who, I don't know his name, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, or I would pick Julian McMahon, who was in Charmed, who was the, the demon uh sometimes boyfriend, sometimes husband. Uh in that so i of Alyssa milano's character oh that's another one i would like to be into charmed there you go but, yeah now as far as movies uh what would i pick as uh, i probably watch more tv shows than movies but i do more films than tv shows hmm. i'm gonna have to think on that one okay I was in, I'm, I mean, just because I see the thing. I know it's not, but I see a thing. Like, what if you could witch in uh, The Wizard of Oz? Which is all. Yeah. Which one? The Wicked Witch and Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When they paint me green, that would work. <laughs> Scully. Scully. That's a very interesting answer because, like, uh, I've been watching that show for the past. Show watches like on. I've never finished the series. Start this, but in the very beginning, right, not believing him. Right. I, I I was sad when, I mean, I know it went on forever, but I was sad when it ended. And then I was glad to see that they started again and they made some of another series. I'm sorry that they didn't continue on that. But the uh, show that I was working on last week, which I can't really talk about, I am a detective in that. And I do have a male partner in that. It's... Uh, can't really say anything else about it. So, but I do play a detective, and I I kind of model myself after Scully. I think about Scully for that, although with a meaner edge than Scully had. Edge, you gotta be. I guess in that type of role, you kind of got a little meaner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. Hear more. No, I was gonna say I can't wait to hear more about your show when you can discuss it. And that's that's one thing that's tough for me about being a podcaster right. is when I have interviews on and right, well, come on and uh, just say like I have this coming. Up. I can't say anything about it, but I have this coming up. It's a cool show. I right. Like with you, I'm a detective in it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I do have some. There's some films because of COVID that we've started and haven't been able to finish. Um, there's Lecherous, which the short won the Blood and Boobs Award. And so we went and accepted that. And uh, we're going to make that into a 
full length feature, but of course that got cut short or we're, it's on hold. We're waiting on it. And then I was, I noticed you had the butcher on your webpage. I am in that. And I play a gypsy psychic and I have a Hungarian accent in that one. Now, is that hard to, with accents? Or is that easy for you to do or is that kind of? Well, I had Hungarian uh, fashion designers I was working with for four years. So I heard them every day. <laughs> so I was able to pick it up. Basically, they sounded like oh. Dracula. So <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm working for Dracula. Yeah. Sounds about right. Oh, and... Um, so uh, then in the next, then I'm going to be doing two more for the same director, Michael. And one I will have, I think it, it was a French accent, but I'm not sure if we will do that. And the other one's caught me. Okay. That I'm going to do in that one. So, um, but things have to get a little better for us to start uh, working again. Although with rapid COVID tests, the 15 minute rapid test, that's that's allowed some of us to go back to work for a, for a while, for a little bit. That's that's a good thing. I mean, this whole COVID, it sucks. How it, it sucks. Literally, like the whole world. Did. Yeah. It's. I'm just waiting for things to get, I want to say back to better than normal. I don't want to say back to normal. I say I want things to get better than normal was, but it's just like, I don't know what the protocols and stuff. I feel like it's just, come on people. It's, it's simple. You go to the store, put a mask on. It's not that difficult. to. Put How long are you in a store for an hour tops? If you're grocery shopping, let's say. Mm -hmm. We have to teach everyone to wash their hands. <laughs> now this, I don't know. If it's <laughs> I, I thought know. we knew, but okay, we don't. <laughs> I have no clue what goes on in the, the uh, women's room, but in the men's room, I don't know if somebody can use the restroom and then just walk out like nothing, or just rinse your hands. Like, just use the bathroom. It takes you a minute to wash your hands. You know, rinse your hands off, lather them up with some soap, you know, lather them up really good, rinse your hands off, dry them off, get your business. Go yeah. Your and then you like, so I work in an office. Well, I'm working from home now, but I work for the state. I usually work in an office. And then you'd go walk past these people's desks and you see them eat. Like, That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, we've all had to. Uh, amazing how everybody has had to have their habits changed to things we should have been doing already. <laughs> that, but that, right, to me, that's like the, I mean, like, Washing your hands after you use the restroom, washing your hands before you eat like that. That's just like in great when you're a child, you do that. Like my niece is six. She I don't have to tell her to wash her hands close to the back. Does right. It. I'm just and then I'm like, these people are like 40 years old. Like, come on, man. You're not gonna wash they gave up on washing their hands, apparently. I guess they didn't have time for it anymore. So we have to relearn to wash our hands. <laughs> I, wish, I wish like somehow. <laughs> they would have. They would have to be like stay locked in the bathroom until they wash their hands. They couldn't mm -hmm. say there's like a, an invisible barrier. Like you don't wash your hands, you can't walk through that barrier. Even if some door for you, you're just stuck in it. So you wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I kind of like this social distancing thing. Because uh, I'm, I'm okay. Here's my. Th I'm a people person. I do love people. And I miss the horror convention so much, like just mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I miss. But with the COVID thing going, the thing I do love is working from home. I, I think it's amazing. And I mean, I'm actually a lot more productive at home because I can have other distractions. Like I'll have music playing or I'll have like a show going on in the background, just something. Or I'll be like, um, I'll be talking to my friends. Just throughout the day, just all day, just talking to my friends, kind of just, just kind of, because it's boring sitting at a desk all day doing work, doing, you know, data entry. So I'm like, okay, let me just do something that'll get my mind doing multiple things. So I can't, I'm focusing on my job, but I'm doing multiple things. So like, I don't know. It, it, what, the way my brain works, it just works that way. It just works that way for me. So that's, that's like a plus with COVID. I'll say another thing is I did get to record a whole lot. And I feel like a lot of other people who, I also through this whole COVID thing, like I was out of work from March 
from March till July, the end of July, but I was getting paid to stay home. Uh, enough to, blessed enough to have that, but I was still able, you know, but I was still able to use my podcast, kind of get better at doing that, kind of get better with my, you know, doing the back. And I feel others who went through the same thing, other people who at home got to protect their craft, kind of figuring things out. And I think, I think, I just, yeah. Getting bad, like people getting sick and dying is the bad part of it, but I feel like a lot of the other things, like where you had to learn certain things, and you're just kind of learning yourself and doing other things more. I think that's a good thing of it, and hopefully, people, you know, will wash their hands more. I hope. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a it's really a tragic situation, um, but trying to think about what has come out of it that helps us, all of us. <laughs> I think the televisit with doctors is amazing. I mean, if you had to go to the doctor, say you work in an office, you had to take a half a day off, you'd have to drive there, you'd sit there waiting uh, for a half an hour, hour. The doctor sees you for 10, 15 minutes, then you're out, then you got to drive again. And it would take four hours, but now you could do it on your break. You take a phone call that lasts 10, 15 minutes and you're done. And I believe that, I think I heard that's going to continue. And so some of these things that we are capable of doing, we are now able, we are doing and will continue to do. And the thing about social distancing, I'm in the Los Angeles area and we're just so many people, we're so close. I've been rammed in the back with a shopping cart in line and I'm, I'm glad people have to stay away now. They can't just force themselves like, go, hurry up, you know? They, they have to distance and wait. God, distance and wait and learn patience. See, that, that's one thing I do like about as far as I hate, I'm not going to lie, but I do like how you can be like, find out some. I hate how when you're in line, someone's like, right. I'm like, look, back up three feet. You don't need to be right here. It's not going to move you're right behind me like that. And that's what I do like about social distancing, I should say, is spreading out in the line. So you, you actually have room to breathe. I'm like, I can breathe. I can go up here put my stuff on the, you know, the conveyor belt, whatever the case may be, and cash out and oh, right here behind me, hitting my hey. cart. Hey. Yeah, and as a woman, I like that too, hey. the social distancing. You. Okay. Yeah. Somebody, I mean, people like, they want to hug me, and it's like, nope, you can't hug me, yeah. don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> Back up. Yeah. <laughs> Back up, I could be dangerous. Oh, with viruses <laughs> and then I'll get scary so they have to stay away one thing I would like though is if they could socially distance with their cars listen, listen to the, I'm, the t I'm, I'm a car guy like I got it from my father cars, and I'll park in my car Time, oh, oh, back man. From everybody, oh, why are you parking so far? I mean, people parking next to me. I don't care if I'm driving my rap not the or one of my other. I'm just like I just park close. I mad when I'm in an empty parking lot. And I park far away, and someone parks like all these. Mm -hmm. all these spots. The front ones, like the point. Especially if I'm going out to eat, I feel why not go further get you know, that food off the car? Oh yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with walking a little bit? Was especially in Los Angeles traffic. <laughs> I don't know. But yes, that's so you're right. Social distancing with cars would be a Never. Yeah, that that would be terrific. So um, another project I was able to work on when uh, during our time at home, we're able to do things on Zoom and more auditions on Zoom, which is really nice. 
and I did uh, worked with Shockfest, and we did a piece called Macabre Mansion, and I believe it's on Amazon now. And uh, Elvira was involved in it, as were some of uh, me and and some other actors and it was on the Godzilla billboard in Times Square and we all did little horror skits and then put it all together and it was really cool and they had dancers in front of it in Times Square I wasn't in Times Square I was in Los Angeles broadcasting on the billboard but people kept asking me are you in New York are you in New York like no, I never said I was in New York. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's that's. I guess that's another cool thing about with the you know with technology. <laughs> Things done. Like you said, you can do auditions via Zoom now, which I feel will probably be a thing of the more into the future even after this, COVID, this pandemic thing because it's it's probably easier on everybody. It's like, hey, I don't have to get up and go somewhere. I can do this right here on my own. Wherever the case oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can do so much more if you don't have to drive for hours. Uh, you can turn the audition in. You can do a bunch of different auditions in a day and have Zoom meetings. You can get a lot accomplished that way. Um, more than just, you know, than the driving around and the hazards involved in that. Um, I'm happy to see there's less traffic. <laughs> I can't say there's less pollution though, because we have fires. <laughs> I mean, I I just hear about it through Facebook or on the news, or a couple of people I know out in California. I'll ask them like, "How is it out there?" Like, I remember was it about a month ago now when the skies were like orange. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. That's something you see. That's something I've seen. In, I never thought. I mean, I didn't see it in person. I'm seeing like pictures or videos of them, like. Wow. That's nuts. Yeah, I just a couple days ago, I got up and uh, I was going to drive my car. And I'm like, what is this all over my car? And it was ashed all over. The windshield was gray. I put, rubbed my finger along and I'm like, wow. And I wasn't even near the fires. I'm closer to the beach. So it really traveled. That's, that's really dry. Is it is it dry here? It's just dry a lot. You guys like have a rain. Well, it has been really dry. Usually, it rains in the winter. I'll say usually, because. I don't know <laughs> if it's going to. It hasn't. It's almost November. <laughs> I haven't seen any rain to speak of where I'm at because we have microclimates too. So it could rain somewhere not that far away, but not where you are. So I wanted to tell the audience also, um, Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support and love uh, and uh, following the films that I do. And where you can catch me is Instagram, Laura, L-A-U-R-A -A underscore Meadows, M-E-A-D-O-W-S underscore actress, uh, as it sounds. I say actress. I have a website, laurameadowsactress.com and laurameadowsartist.com to uh, separate the two different uh, endeavors. And I'm on Facebook. I mostly use my personal Facebook, but it's got 5,000 right now. Uh, you, but I have a fan page that you can hit me up there. And you can check out my IMDb. And it has uh, credits and different films that you can watch. Uh, the Occultist 2 just came out, Sterling uh, Productions. And you can catch that. Um, and uh, let's see. And then 
something, um, The Grim Weaver. It came out and you can catch that. And um, you can go to my IMDb and see some other things that you might want to see. I've uh, done some shorter films. I've worked for Black Box TV and Crypt TV. It was kind of funny story. My youngest son came to me and he goes, Mama, I want to watch this show with you. They're really good. It's Crypt TV. And he turned this episode on. And this is the moment you really like as a parent when you're cool to your kids. And I said, do you know I'm in that show, that one you want to watch? And he's like, oh. <laughs> and it was like, oh, yay, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Finally, something cool. <laughs> but I have the best. I have the best boys in the world. I'm very blessed. Are they into horror much or semi? Yeah, yeah, they're into horror mm -hmm. and fantasy. Uh, and my oldest son, he loves to watch everything I'm in. So sometimes he shouldn't. <laughs> Is it because of the language and the blood? Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> but he loves everything I'm in. Mean, so I, I find that's really cool. So, um, and then plus the music videos too. What? And I've done different hip hop ones. And sometimes they'll play them when they were going to school. They both graduated. Um, COVID. Um, the first semester when everybody had to go home, they were that class of 2020. Oh. Where they were just trying to get it together and <laughs> the distance learning wasn't quite working too well. <laughs> it's definitely they're doing a lot better than they were doing it regular yeah, I, it seems that they're doing better. Uh, at the time, it was just kind of a mad rush. Like, uh-oh, we got to get internet to everybody. Uh-oh, we got to get computers to everybody. And Los Angeles being the gigantic school system. Uh, but they both, they both graduated. And, um, you know, and then as far as a prom, there really was a one. So... That's, uh, but they didn't mind. They liked being at home, actually. Nothing wrong with that. There's no <laughs> they weren't one of those that were sad. I'll say that. <laughs> now, would they, are they into acting at all? Like, did they ever mention wanting to act in a horror movie with you or just in one in general? Or They all have taken a turn. Okay. Yeah. Um, my oldest son is modeled and he, he hasn't really acted in horror, horror movie, but I've taken him to some different auditions. My daughter, uh, she's my oldest. She's done some set design and has been in, in a few films. And so has my youngest son. They've been in a few films, uh, but he more likes to give opinions. He kind of likes to be the, you know, yeah. It's cool. They get, they get a little taste of your world. And it's, even if it's something you know, like modeling and set design, I think that's all. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. It's something that where maybe a lot of kids don't get that opportunity to see this stuff and actually see it. And hey, they can decide there if they want to be a part of it or not. Cause they can, they can see firsthand what you have to do to go through that as far as acting goes. Cause you know, Everybody, when you're a kid, you want to be an actor or actress and all this other cool stuff. But what you put into it, not, and some people like, really what I want. I I think that they see it. Um, I haven't heard one way or the other, but I think when they see it so closely and intimately, I have found that everyone really pretty much has a strong opinion about it, like I did. Love it or hate it. 
I've seen some people when they're first on a set, I heard this one lady, I was on Justified, and she said, uh, I never want to do this again. And decided right there at that moment, the first time. So I, I think it's something that you just have an immediate response to. Maybe. Stuff. That doesn't, I mean, I feel like it could be good most things in life, especially yeah. something like that, but you want the rest of your life in a career. Like, do I want to do this? You know, you try. Maybe it'll take a day or two. Things, but like, I don't know. What? What? At all. What? Oh, God. Just because, again, as a fan, all you see is the glitz and glamour from acting. You don't see... Ruling. Oh, you got it. Out of the... Oh, out of the... Yeah. Oh, my God. Also... And especially... That's what this thing acting is. All that fan. It's like, oh, there's a lot of hard work. And it's very rare for you to be that person. Like, you're doing. Yeah, you can go to the morning. Why do you... Yeah. I... I like... Uh, I... I like the work it doesn't bother me at all it is a lot of work uh sometimes three o'clock in the morning and those are the majority of your lines but those of us that do it we all know and it's just so much satisfaction to see the product to see how it turns out to interact with each other because it's such a group it's such a team project and I think that I meet the nicest people in that world that want to work together and want to make a really good product. So I have met some of the most wonderful giving people. And that's another thing I really like about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. And then the people that watch and ask me questions, that's also wonderful. See, that's yeah, good. That's good. Yeah, Again, that like was, interview. Was, <laughs> you and there's yeah. actors, actresses. This is just yeah. uh, this is across, the, yeah. all across the board. Yeah. Some really don't like being an interview. Some really don't like being an interview. Yeah. Ask yeah. questions in general. And in my mind, I'm like, why the hell did you even go there if you don't want to be there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't really like to judge anyone. But uh, I like, I, I love the interviews. I, I was so looking forward to today to be with you and everybody today. Also, if any, I also do audit, I sign uh, photographs, I send out autographs. I've had different people ask me. So if anybody sees a picture either in your background or on my Facebook or Instagram that they're interested in, you can get a hold of me and I will send you an autographed picture. You're going to take me up on that? <laughs> I already sent one to Steve. Steve asked me. <laughs> Somebody like, I, I love getting autographs. Yeah. I always make this joke. I'm the type of person. I'm never in a horror movie. I'm never in a horror movie. I don't care about the movie. Copy that movie that was it. Hey, Eric, you sign all these movies. I was in these movies. You were in it for two years. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you get your autograph for this? I loved you in this movie. I love this picture. Of so I'm holding. I'm hold if I'm going to. After. Okay. It's awesome yeah, to let I'm willing to sign up and talk with fans, but I just, as a fan, it makes me love act more because you're not just, oh, I'm a, you know, some people, not just actors, actors, people in general, they have like that energy about them where they feel like they're better than everybody and they're above everybody. Okay, I don't really want to deal with that person, but you're just down to earth and humble and nice. Aww. Thank you. But you know, a lot of people really are down to earth and humble and nice. Oh, no, for the, mo for the most part, they are, but you don't. Uh, uh, like, uh, I, I think that's true with any profession. 
really that you know, that's why I said not just actors and actors. It's, it's really yeah. across the board. Like, like all right, okay. Just pour me a soda. Relax. Uh huh. Yeah. People have people have too big egos. Yeah. They gotta bring it down. Mm hmm. So, are you gonna be doing anything special for Halloween? Uh, yeah. Um. My wife and I, we're just gonna cook like a bunch of little appetizers and stuff, dress up, do drinks, and just kind of have horror movies playing throughout the whole day and just have fun and hang out because you can't do anything really. Like, and the people that we would have a Halloween get together with was was my brother. Like, they moved to Colorado and we're in New York, so so we're just stay at the house, be safe, have some fun home, eat, have a few drinks. And like, horror movies playing, maybe some music. Uh, uh, oh, I'm going to be doing some more podcasts. Awesome. And ta and talking and and visiting with people. So that's that's something that I am looking forward to doing, just like today. And uh, I've been watching horror movies all along. Oh yeah, it's, I, that's excuse me. That's something I do all year around. Like I don't just do it in October. I feel like I watch the least amount of horror movies in October, and it's always me. I think one reason is because I'm always anticipating to watch a bunch. And then two, I, I'm all. I feel like I'm always doing something. Whether it's, I mean, not that I'm not working any other month, but I feel like because I'm working and just doing other things, I'm like, oh damn, I meant to watch this movie. I didn't even have a chance. I didn't even get a chance. <laughs> well, gosh, I I went out to the store today, and I wanted to pick up some masks and things like that, and all the Halloween stuff was gone. It's, that's and, that. Halloween is such a big holiday yeah. because, like, a lot of stuff comes in September, and then freaking October fifteenth, here comes the stupid Christmas. Yeah, it was Christmas, and I'm like, wait a minute, where's Halloween? It's not Halloween yet. Yeah, wait till November fourth at least. Then put the Christmas. Give, you know, give us a month of Halloween stuff in store. Right, right. Don't cut, don't cut the Halloween short. I mean, it's uh, there wasn't even really. I guess I'm sure lots of people are going to write in and say, I know where there's some Halloween stuff, but the pl I went to a couple of different places today. They were even almost all out of the candy. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know with, with Walmart, they usually have a ton of candy and I guess they started ordering less because you know, the day after Halloween, it goes from like 75 or 50% off and all the way down to 75% off. And they're trying to, not make that happen anymore <laughs> oh yeah the half price candy sales are awesome <laughs> i i have to be very careful though not to buy too much of it i never get any of it i shouldn't say <laughs> they might hear me i'll say i don't give any out <laughs> and I'm, i it, well for for one like where i live the first year we lived here i think trick-or-treaters came we didn't have candy the second year, my wife bought candy. I didn't want to, but she bought candy. Nobody came. I was like, I'm not mm -hmm. going to get candy. I'm going to get candy I like. I'm going to eat the candy. If trick-or-treaters come, they can have the dum-dums or the root beer candy or stuff that I don't really care. Right. right. You start to look at it, and you're like, mmm, that's too good to give to anybody else. I'm going to keep that. Reese's, for example, is probably one of my favorite candies. If I buy Reese's, I'm not buying them to give to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> If you get one in your bag, count your blessings. <laughs> that means your that means if you get one in your bag from me, that means your costume was amazing. Um, um, that's how I'll give out a Reese. You gotta earn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the candy bars, the all any, anything chocolate, but you end up with a whole lot of when you grow out, it's like, okay, you can have the gum yep. and the dum dums right. All and right. Oh, the candy corn. Everybody has strong feelings about the candy corn, it seems. <laughs> I, I used to love it. Now that went down. I like I like it slash tolerate it. Like I used to love it maybe back like two, three years ago and further back than that. But I'm saying like two, three years ago and then I just started to like it less and less and less. Now, mm -hmm. like, you know what it is? It's like if you get like a small bag of candy corn, that's enough. But you know, candy corn comes in the big bag for like two dollars. It's a bag like this big. Mm hmm. That's candy corn. Yeah. <laughs> so they get the candy corn and the 
you know, and then the good chocolate stays here. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, my favorite, like I said, it's Reese's. Hit or miss with Snickers. I have to be in the mood for Snickers, honestly. I'd rather have the Snickers ice cream. Me too. Cream. The Snickers ice cream, amazing. But the Snickers candy bar, it's it's okay. You give me Reese's, Skittles, Sour Patch Kids, Starburst, stuff like that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Milky Way, Three Musketeers. We've turned into a candy ad, guys. <laughs> Talking about Halloween here. It's hard to be scary when you want candy. Oh, <laughs> and back to giving candy out, though, the funny thing was this year, like earlier this year, I was, I was thinking, because I think about horror and Halloween like early in the year, I was considering giving out candy and then COVID happened. So what COVID taught me was, Aaron, you're not supposed to give out candy. <laughs> That's it. You're supposed to buy it for yourself. Exactly. Everybody else, you give out candy, though, because the trick-or-treaters, which it's not the same from when I was a child. Trick-or-treating was so much different. Like, everybody would be out there, neighborhoods, all the kids would be out. And once we got to a certain age where you couldn't go to where you didn't have to go with your parents anymore, then you go out, with your, you know, you go out with your friends and your cousins and brother, your siblings. And it was just so fun because it would be everybody out there. All the houses are decorated for the most part. Now it's like two houses decorated. <laughs> so all the yeah. Houses, everybody's giving out candy and the kids just wanted to be out there. But now it's like the complete, I mean, before, pre, even before COVID, I feel like a lot of kids were just, they were on knees a lot. Like you want to go trick or treat? Oh, yeah. right. Right. Yes. These have taken over. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I went, I'm 30, I'm going to be 35 next month. I went trick or treating about four or five years ago with, it was my wife, my sister, my stepsons and my nephews. And I had like one of these black masks on and I had a bag. Like I was going to the houses, but I wouldn't say trick or treat. <laughs> I let the kids say trick or treat and just stand there. And this one older lady was like, I know you're an adult, but she was like, you're having a good time. Here's some candy. I'm like, hey, I mean <laughs> Yeah. They said that to me when I was a teenager and I'm like, no, I'm trick or treating. See, and that's my thing too, as far like, I, if a teenager's going trick-or-treating, be happy if they're trick-or-treating and not destroying stuff. Give them some candy. So yeah. That, <laughs> if you're someone that's handing out candy, I mean, give them the candy. I don't... Let them trick-or-treat. I would say, I'm, 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 I'm not even joking. I say, if the adults want to trick-or-treat with the kids, too, let them trick-or-treat, because the way I look at it is, you know when people dress up their little two year one- and two-year-olds trick-or-treat and bringing them out to get all this candy? That's for the parents. Mm -hmm. for the kid. The yeah. Kid, <laughs> the kid will get two pieces of that candy out of, like, the whole bunch. <laughs> That's for them. <laughs> and they'll sit there in their room and they'll think, where's the candy? Did yeah. mommy and daddy eat the candy? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think there's some horror movies about that too. I hope so. <laughs> and, and the kids getting revenge on their parents. I've yeah. seen some of those. <laughs> you know, that's that's a movie. <laughs> Uh, now, after the podcast shows, are you doing anything? Excuse me, are you doing anything special on Halloween? Like after the shows, are you gonna throw some movies on, have a drink, and some candy? Or yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch some movies. Um, my, uh, we kind of like to watch some of the go to YouTube and watch some of the ghost uh, hunter type things. Okay, and uh, look at it and say, do you think you know? Because they seem to think they have some real evidence of ghosts and we're like is that real no or we look at it and like mm, that could be so that's kind of fun to just you know look at some of the more uh some of the people that go out and and scout the ghosts and then of course every speck of candy in the house will be eaten probably not by me and <laughs> But you do is get like a bag of vegetables or something you know your kids don't like. You put the candy in there, and you're just when they're not looking, you're just eating it out of there. Yeah, hey, you want some? No, mom. Okay. Yeah, there's an idea. Put I'm, it right in the middle of the bag of carrots. There you go. They won't even realize. They won't even look in the bag of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> or put it in the raisins. Oh, man, I like raisins too, though. See, that's that's another good one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but a lot of kids don't like raisins. They think it's weird. I see when kids don't like certain things, they go oh, more for me. I don't care. <laughs> 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 I 
I was like, I'll get things. I'm like, I, I hope nobody in the house likes this. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes I'll try to buy things that nobody likes just so I can actually have it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not and then and then I find out somebody has developed a taste for it. And then I'm like, oh, no. Go again. <laughs> yeah. One thing I do, I didn't watch it this year. I actually didn't even know when it started, but I'm going to try to watch it maybe sometime this weekend, hopefully. Um, Hall I love those Halloween Wars shows where they're doing all the, like, the uh, they'll have like the pumpkins and they're carving those up, doing different things. It's all They're doing with all food stuff. How they do that, I have no idea. It amazes me. I tried to carve a pumpkin one time, never again. Mm -hmm. Way too much work. <laughs> yeah, I... I... I attempted to carve a pumpkin and you're right. It's way too much work. <laughs> I didn't do it for being a commercial artist. I really didn't do a very good job of it. I decide after all, I just would use a magic marker on the pumpkin. Yeah, I didn't like, we, we tried it about four or five years ago. And it was my first, I don't know if it was my wife's first time around, but it was definitely my first time trying to carve pumpkins. And I didn't realize all the work that went into it. Like, besides cutting them open that's a pain especially when you use the stuff that they give you, you mm -hmm. they give you your hands hurting your thumbs hurting and then you got to gut the whole thing i didn't know this like i just cut stuff stuff out trying to trace all this stuff <laughs> like, no, you have to cut it open cut the top out gut it and then you do it i'm just like Are you serious? This, yeah the, at the times like that you wish you were samantha from bewitched and you could just twinkle your nose and make the pumpkin yep. that way pretty much just or just snap. <laughs> just twinkle the nose and there you go there's your pumpkin <laughs> and that's another show i loved oh, there was all kinds of great shows growing up i agree i agree with the pumpkins like that's the, the jack-o-lanterns that's something I'll always when people do different things besides just i mean which i think it's awesome that they do that too but like the regular smile they do like the halloween but um, when they do all different types of things, I'm like, how the hell did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you have on your hands to make this amazing, amazing art? <laughs> like a mask or like a Freddy face and all this other stuff. I'm like, how? Just ha just tell me how. <laughs> do it. Food, food sculpture. Yeah, I know, which is, am it, it amazes me. Every single time I see it. It could be the same picture every single year. I'm just like, Oh, you bastard. Or the Halloween cakes, some of those Halloween shows where they're where they're doing baking things and they make these beautiful lands, beautiful scapes, Halloween scapes out of food and cakes and pastries. It's like, wow. It's, yeah, that's the Halloween war show I was talking about. And they, they do it like out of the sugar and it's like glass. Mm -hmm. And they only get like, at, like for some of the things, they only get a, like, say, four hours to do it. And I'm just like, yo, four hours. I'm still cutting the damn pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I start to feel nervous for them. It's like, oh, my God, are you going to get it done? And I wanna, really want to see it. <laughs> I, I, like those things just amaze me. And that, not only for them to make something that's edible, but make something that's edible and tastes good. I mean, the edible tastes good, but looks that art is what I mean. Like making that beautiful art. And then it also tastes good at the same time. Mm -hmm. like if, if, if for me, it's going to be one or it's going to be more tasting good than looking good because I can cook. I can, you know, I can do that. But art, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and then after they do it, I don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's, it's not something I would want to touch and eat, you know, I just want a pretty picture, but then it's going to get moldy. So you have to do something with it. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> uh, Oh. I appreciate you. I do really, really appreciate you coming on. This was definitely a good, a good time, a good, fun conversation with you. Oh, thank you, and I so appreciate you having me on. I really do. And uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming and visiting us on this Halloween show. And uh, come and check me out on Facebook, Instagram, ask for an autograph picture. I'll be happy to send you one and uh, just have a safe, healthy, happy Halloween. Yes, have a safe, happy, healthy Halloween. And when you get a chance, just, when you get a chance, can you just send me your links? And then when, when I drop this episode, which I'll try to get it out ASAP, I will. Okay down below so people can 
get a hold of you and get an autograph from you like I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, okay. Yay. <laughs> I certainly will. I would love to. And um, yeah, and hit my um, IMDb and watch some of the films I'm in. That would be very cool. Awesome. Everybody go check her out. She's awesome. She's a very, very, very nice, kind person. So podcasters, reach out. <laughs> Get her on your show. Great conversation, as you guys can see. Again, thank you again for coming on. Thank you to all the My viewers. pleasure. Thank you to all the viewers. As always, I'll see you in your nightmares. Ooh.